Hi there everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Jennifer Kirk and we're not welcoming you up to Weir Yard in the loft, instead we're with the Hornby and Model World layout. Today's video is sponsored by Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders designed to be fully compatible with every manufacturer's locomotive. <laughs> Now you might remember that I built this for that TV series that went out on the Yesterday satellite channel. And off the back of that, I've been asked to take this to quite a few different events as part of the promotion. And so it kind of made sense to take it from being a television prop that was only meant to work for maybe 20 minutes and you could edit out anything that went wrong, to something that's gonna work all weekend. And I think I have managed it. So this is just test running now. The whole layout's been in storage for probably about a year, year and a bit, so I'm actually quite amazed that it all still works. We've got a different upside down train to try and improve the reliability, and as you can see, fingers crossed, it does seem to be doing all right. In Hornby and Model World, we used an ex-Lancashire and Yorkshire pug from the Hornby range, and whilst that is a really great looking locomotive that really does still hold its own, when you run it upside down, it's too short a wheelbase, and I ended up having to use a stabilising bogey, which wasn't ideal. So instead what I've done is Hornby have very, very kindly supplied uh, a new locomotive. It's from their railroad range, and that has a longer wheelbase, um, and it's also actually slightly lighter as well. And that's allowed me to make a much more stable locomotive to run upside down that hasn't needed that guiding bogey on the front. Front. So I'm much happier with this. And as you can see, all the time that I've been talking, including the intro for this video, I've not had to touch anything, it's just kept plodding along. And that is exactly what we're looking for when taking this to a show. But it is quite surreal to watch a train running completely upside down. And if you're not into the upside down, we've got an ordinary boring right way up layout as well. You know, for the vanilla people. I've done a few running repairs, including these sort of pelmets were starting to come off. They were only lightly tacked in place for the filming. So I've gone gung-ho with the staple gun and that seems to have fixed that. Now the mechanism that swiveled everything around, that is no longer connected. But as you can see, everything does still rotate by hand. And as long as you're gentle, nothing falls off and it all does still work. Everything else has worked after it's enforced habitation in a shed and in fact this layout very narrowly escaped being broken up about a year ago and if it wasn't for Covid then it would have gone to various different homes but with model rail clubs not up and running I mean not able to travel to um, drop off part of this to a manufacturer that wanted to use it for the basis of a, a showcase for some of their products then this would have been gone but it's here and I was able to put it back together when I was asked to take it for some publicity at Model Rail Scotland. The thing I'm most nervous about is actually the transport. It was never intended to be taken anywhere. It was never intended to last beyond filming. It's just um, just made for a TV programme. Um, so there's a lot of corners cut just so it looks nice on screen um, with no thought for longevity or transportability. So my biggest worry is that it just completely rips itself to pieces in the back of the van because it just can't do deal with the stresses. Um, after that, if it gets to the show all right and is still <laughs> workable at the show, fingers crossed, then what we're going to be looking at is hopefully this upside down locomotive. There's a lot that could go wrong with this. Um, first up, it could just simply fall off and break. And there is one spare locomotive, um, but 
you know, after those two, it's simply a case of I'd be scrounging them in the hall and gluing magnets to them. Luckily, these are a lot more robust than um, the actual models. These are toy trains, so they do stand a lot more knocking about. But then the final thing that could go wrong is quite simply the motor burns out with the strain because it's being pulled onto the track by some quite powerful magnets. That alone is a bit like putting it on the track and pushing down on it as it's trying to run. But that magnetism also affects the magnetic field on the electrical motor, and that too can cause untold stresses. It's one of the reasons that there's no DCC decoder in this. We've actually had to cheat and mounted that hidden away with just the motor outputs going to the track because that magnetic field was just scrambling what the decoder was trying to do. So there's a lot of unknowns in this. But hopefully it's going to last the full three days and it is a big show, three full days. And then at the end of it, make a decision whether I want to do that again. Well, I hope you really, really enjoyed that video as much as I enjoyed making this prop for Hornby A Model World. And right now, it's on display at Model Rail Scotland in Glasgow. So if you haven't already been to see this at work, it's well worth coming to see it in action if you're able to. But until next time, this is me, Jenny Kirk, saying don't forget to like this video, share it too, and also subscribe to the channel to be the first to know about new videos as and when they go up. And also don't forget that you can uh, also now apply for channel membership or also head on over to Patreon to help support the channel to make the videos that you want to see. But until next time, you take great care of yourself. And this is me, Jenny Kirk, saying bye for now. Today's video is sponsored by Trainomatic makers of DCC decoders designed to be fully compatible with every manufacturer's locomotive. Visit train-o-matic.com to browse the full range and see what they've got suitable for you. I'd like to send out a huge thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon, and an extra special huge thanks goes out to Anthony Kidson, Offshore Allen, Michael Lockie, Helen Sink, Gary Lewis, David Quinn, Sparky107107, George Botterini, Chris Moss, Robert Steers, MD of San Juan Model Company and Grantline Products, Sam Yates, Dale Williams, John N. from NC, NYMRish, Jonathan Foster, Peter, Clifford Ison, Larry W. Grant, NI Railways 4000 Class, Ian Coulson, Alan Dickerson, Eddie Popper, and Karen Nickel. Thank you. Without you guys, I couldn't do this.